Hey y'all, it's Stacy. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are making one of my most popular recipes at the holidays, my microwave peanut brittle. Now, growing up, we always made peanut brittle at the holidays, but I remember standing at that stove, helping my mother stir that cast iron skillet of scalding hot sugar for what seemed like hours. When I realized that you could do this process in the microwave, it makes it so much easier. Now, I will say, this process is much easier with the microwave, but there's still some science involved here. Anytime that you're making candy, you know, it's a very precise process. Now, while I don't necessarily require that you have some type of thermometer, to ensure recipe success, having a candy thermometer or an instant read thermometer is really going to improve this process for you because it's going to ensure that you get to that hard crack stage. Now, when we talk about candy making, the hard crack stage is somewhere between 300 and 310 degrees. What that does is it's gonna give us that nice, crisp, crunchy brittle that we want and not chewy caramel. So even though we're gonna do this process in the microwave, having that thermometer is just gonna help us a little bit. To start, I've got a microwave safe bowl here. I'm going to add one cup of granulated sugar and half a cup of corn syrup. This is light corn syrup. Now, the exact time that it takes to make this is going to vary depending on the wattage of your microwave. I happen to have microwaves here that are both at 1650 watts and 1200 watts. So sometimes with that 1200 watt one, it takes a little bit longer. So knowing what to look for in terms of the color, and then also having that instant read thermometer is what's going to ensure that you get this cooked to the right temperature. I'm just stirring this together to get the corn syrup and that sugar combined. And what I've done is I've got my other ingredients pre-measured and ready because this process happens pretty quickly, especially when after that last cooking, when we add our other ingredients, it happens fast. So having everything pre-measured out is really gonna save you some time and some heartache if you mess it up. This is going in the microwave right now for about four minutes. It's going to boil, so make sure that you've got a silicone mitt like this or something to hold this bowl because this bowl might be really hot when you come back for it. All right, so you can see boiling sugar. You wanna be careful. This bowl is a little warm to the touch. We're gonna add our peanuts and our butter here. This is three cups of raw peanuts and a tablespoon of unsalted butter. And we're just gonna stir this together using a heat proof spatula. And it may be a little thick at this point because what happens is that boiling sugar is that nice liquid temperature, but when we add the room temperature butter and the room temperature peanuts, it's going to decrease the temperature and make it a little sticky. But that's okay, because once we put it back in the microwave, it's gonna melt all that back down. Now, I like to use raw peanuts. I like the flavor that the peanuts get when you cook them in this hot sugar, but you can use like a cocktail peanut or a roasted peanut um, I just prefer the flavor of the raw peanuts. This is going to go back in the microwave for three to five minutes. We're gonna be watching for a nice amber color and also watching to make sure that we get between 300 and 310 degrees. All right, so at the end of three minutes, I'm just taking the temperature of my brittle here we're at 265 degrees, so we're not yet at that 310 or 300 to 310 range. So this is gonna go back in for two more minutes. All right, in my 1200 watt microwave, it took about an additional five minutes. You can see that the sugar has kind of a nice amber color now. And if we test this, we're at 303. And I said we needed to be between 300 and 310, so we're right there with it. I'm gonna use a heat proof spatula. Since my bowl is microwave safe, it's not hot, I'm just gonna stir this. Now the next process happens very quickly. I've got a teaspoon of vanilla. It's gonna go right in. You can hear it kind of cook, it's hot sugar, and a teaspoon of baking soda. Now the baking soda is gonna cause this to foam up and give us that honeycomb 
like texture that we like that makes our brittle easy to eat and not super thick and hard. You can see how it's foaming up here. It's getting that light color. Now I've got a large baking sheet here that I've sprayed with a little non-stick cooking spray. And I'm gonna use this mitt just because the bottom of this bowl is a little warm. And I'm gonna spread this out right here onto our prepared baking pan. And again, it's hot. So be careful. And you have to work quickly. That's why I like having all those ingredients pre-measured out into the little bowls to ensure that we get this done quickly. And then I'm just gonna kind of spread this thin with the back of my spatula. If you have to, you can also spray your spatula with a little non-stick cooking spray. But normally, because we have some butter in this, that's not an issue. So just use the back of a silicone spatula, spoonula, whatever you want to call it, and just kind of spread this thin. And it's going to start firming up almost immediately. All right, so this is cooled for about 20, 30 minutes, and it's ready to break up. You can see because we sprayed our aluminum foil here, it peels right off. We're just gonna break this into bite-sized pieces. And that's it. Folks, you can find this full, super easy recipe on the website. Just head over to southernbite.com and search for microwave peanut brittle. Y'all enjoy.